Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 18. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. How to tackle this problem? The research points to schools. Special correspondent Lisa Stark of our partner Education Week visited a high school in Virginia to see if their approach of teaching mental health can work. It's part of our ongoing education series, Making the Grade. Depression is a treatable illness, true or false. This is the kind of lesson you don't often hear in a high school classroom. Every single one of you matters. We care about every single one of you. So if you are not feeling great, if you're concerned about a friend who might also not be feeling great, please, please come tell us. The subject, preventing suicide, taught by school counselors at Freedom High in Chantilly, Virginia. This district, Loudoun County, is expanding prevention efforts. It has dealt with 10 suicides in the past three years. We're going to go over some of the signs of depression. Just by a show of hands, can we throw out some ideas that maybe you can identify some signs of depression that you've seen or recognize? Yeah. Um, always feeling sad. Always feeling sad. We figured we have to be very public about this. We have to be upfront about it. We have to talk about mental wellness. And we have to talk about suicide. We can't hide behind anything. Principal so cool, Douglas though. Fulton has made mental health education an essential part of the curriculum at this high-stress, high-performing public school outside Washington, D.C. If we're not working on building our mental wellness for all of our students, we're missing a piece of education. I have grown up with depression and anxiety. Molly Kammerdiner is a recent graduate of Freedom High, now in college and doing well. It was a school guidance counselor who first realized Molly could be suicidal and told her mother, Kim. Molly was in sixth grade. I was just shocked. She, she totally floored me. She said the reason Molly would be the one kid that, that you really have to watch is because she was very popular, great grades, nothing pointed to issues with Molly, nothing stuck out, except she was always sad. Therapy helped. Molly has never tried to hurt herself, but she says she hit rock bottom in 11th grade. I wasn't doing my schoolwork, my grades were dropping, and I, I care a lot about my studies. Um, so it was really difficult. And then, um, more emotionally. Um, I got hit pretty hard and... Are you okay? <laughs> yes. You don't have to continue if you don't want to. No, but I mean it needs to be said. Um, sometimes you come across like everything's completely fine and there are days where you just want to die and you feel really really bad and no one can see it and you're waiting for somebody to see it. Molly's older sister did see it and went to a Freedom High School counselor. And the counselors at school were the first people to hop on it and take care of me and screen me and make sure I was doing okay and give me options. And it felt like they cared. And so that was all I really needed at the time was I needed to know that somebody cared. When it comes to educating our youth, the important things to teach them are that mental health struggles are common to human experience. There should be no stigma or shame in that that asking for help is a good, strong thing to do, not a sign of weakness. Dr. Christine Moutier with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention says even though schools don't have enough counselors and psychologists, many are trying to make mental health a priority. They have eyes on our youth of America and can notice changes in their behavior and act um, to save lives, really. Nearly one in five high school students will seriously consider suicide in a 12-month period, according to the Centers for Disease Control. 7% will attempt it. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death for those aged 10 to 19. Rates are especially high for gay, lesbian, and bisexual students and Native Americans. Suicide prevention experts say there are two key roles that schools can take. First is to identify those students who may be at risk of harming themselves, and then to help connect them to the mental health services they need. Mental health issues can start at a young age, in half of all cases before age 14. And the teenage years can be stressful, perhaps even more so nowadays, affecting students of all races and all economic levels, 
including those at relatively well-off Freedom High. I'm taking three AP classes, uh, which has a really large workload. Social media, that's one huge thing. That really takes a toll on a lot of us. The deadlines that we have, things that we feel obligated to accomplish. Mental health got put on the back burner, unfortunately, and it shouldn't have. At Freedom, the goal isn't just to help students in a crisis, but to prevent the crisis in the first place. <laughs> They're working to make students feel connected to each other and to the staff. Not easy in a school of 2,100. So the school puts every student into an advisory, small groups of 14. You guys are freshmen, so you guys are kind of still learning the ways of high school. Freshman advisories are led by seniors, such as Arnav Kumar, to help create a bond between the newest students and the most experienced. Teacher Debbie Savage runs the program. Our overall goal, again, is about relationships and building relationships, because if you have strong relationships, you're going to feel good about yourself. Did you guys like a lollipop? There's also a big effort to create a school environment that's welcoming and supportive. The students on lollipop duty, they're part of a suicide prevention program called Sources of Strength, used in about 3,000 schools nationwide. Councillor Monica Belton oversees the effort at Freedom High. The meat and potatoes of Source of the Strength is really talking about strength stories, talking about what other kids are doing to get them through the hard times and how it's working for them. And so that's what we're asking people to do is share their stories of strength. I want you to write down, draw pictures, do whatever you want to do to let us know about things that you do that give you strength. The focus is on building coping skills, using resources such as family support, positive friendships, mentors, healthy activities. So we're going to take turns and everybody's going to present their poster as a group. When we feel sad or we feel blue, these are some of the things we do. My name's Alex. I like to drive. My name's Lizzie, and I like to exercise. Taking long walks, music in my ear, friends all here, working in the gym, Making mama proud. <laughs> this rap is short. It's We're not about length. We hope you like our sources of strength. <laughs> Students recruited to participate come from all parts of the school community and go through four hours of training. They'll become peer leaders, suicide prevention ambassadors. Here's senior Melina Watson. So I think slowly but surely we've we've brought anxiety and suicidal ideation or depression, like those feelings have become part of like our everyday conversation, which is great. For Principal Douglas Fulton, this is personal. I was a parent who got that phone call. Your kid's in the hospital, they try to kill themselves. It's scary. It's an uncertain feeling for a parent, but it's also a time you really question everything. Good morning. His child is doing well. Fulton hopes the efforts at his school can make a difference. It did for Molly. The high school, for sure, they saved me. And that's a big statement, but um, they really, they did save me. And the staff here at Freedom says it is determined to stay vigilant. In just the first month of school, counselors screened five students flagged as possible suicide risks. For Education Week in the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Stark in Chantilly, Virginia.